Sugar is good for you. Not just okay in moderation, not just fruit sugar, not just natural sugar, no. Sugar itself, even table sugar, has some insane benefits. Of course, anyone who knows anything about health will tell you that sugar is the absolute worst thing you can put in your body. Because sugar and ethanol are the same, every which way you turn. Consuming a lot of refined sugars is known to have a very large number of bad effects on the brain and body. I don't know that there's anyone that really debates that anymore. But guess what? They're all wrong. And in fact, the reason that they think it's bad is actually the exact reason why it has so many benefits. But there's one key detail that almost nobody talks about that is the difference between sugar being beneficial for your metabolism or contributing to a host of issues. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to cover the benefits of sugar and its metabolism on a cellular and biochemical level and explain how to incorporate sugar into your diet without worrying about all of these negative effects that people keep talking about. So what exactly is sugar on a molecular level? Table sugar is called sucrose. Sucrose is made up of two different molecules, glucose and fructose. Now, glucose, no one seems to have a problem with. It's the main carbohydrate in things like starch, and it's what your blood sugar is made up of. Your body literally produces it itself. Now, fructose, on the other hand, which is in things like high fructose corn syrup, seems to get all of the blame. And the way that your body breaks down fructose is different than the way that it breaks down glucose. So the metabolism of glucose, when your cells take in glucose and they break it down for energy, that's a pretty regulated process within the cell. In other words, there's a lot of different checkpoints throughout this process of turning glucose into energy. And if there's anything stopping this process at any of these checkpoints, then the metabolism gets stopped. However, fructose does not have as many or as stringent of metabolic checkpoints, if you will. It's less highly regulated. That means that your cells can break it down much faster. And in the context of a bad diet, when you're overfeeding or you're eating extra calories and gaining weight, that can be a bad thing because the unregulated nature of fructose metabolism can cause it to convert into fat. However, on the other hand, if you're not in that caloric surplus, if you're not gaining weight and fructose is a part of your normal diet, then the fact that fructose has a rapid and unregulated metabolism actually gives it some incredible properties. So here we can see the metabolism of both glucose and of fructose. These are all the different steps needed to convert these molecules into energy in your mitochondria. As you can see that there's far less intermediates with fructose. That's less of those checkpoints that I was talking about. Not only that, but there are some unique metabolites of fructose. So essentially the first step in breaking down fructose yields a molecule called fructose 1-phosphate. And this fructose 1-phosphate is one of the reasons why fructose has some superpowers. It actually is able to act as a stimulator of your energy metabolism. It activates some of the enzymes that burn glucose. So it activates an enzyme called PFK1, which is an enzyme that breaks down glucose. It inhibits PDHK, which is an enzyme that inhibits the breakdown of glucose. So it inhibits the inhibitor, therefore it activates. It also promotes the translocation of a different enzyme from the nucleus into the part of the cell where it's actually active. And this enzyme is called glucokinase. And this is often the rate limiting step in glucose metabolism. That means that this is often the bottleneck. Fructose also activates another enzyme called pyruvate kinase, which again helps break down glucose. So this is all to say that fructose, through its unique metabolism, is not only less regulated in its own metabolism, but it also promotes the metabolism of glucose. And this is why if you replace a portion of the starches in the diet with sugars, you will actually see an increase in metabolism. This is just one animal study here stating that animals fed a low fat, high sucrose diet were actually leaner than animals fed a high complex carbohydrate diet. In fact, multiple human studies have shown this as well. Here's one study where they fed people either glucose or sucrose or other types of carbohydrates, and they found that the sucrose stimulated their metabolism rapidly within two hours. Here's another paper showing that in normal weight subjects, the total dietary induced thermogenesis, which is basically how much heat or energy you produce after a meal, was significantly greater after sucrose than after glucose. Another paper here looking at 24 hour energy expenditure or how many calories your body burns throughout a 24 hour period. And they saw that indeed people who ate the sucrose or the sugar actually burned more calories than people eating either fat or starch. And this effect was the greatest in people who are post-obese. So basically people who already lost weight 
who are prone to having a low metabolic rate, if they eat more sugar in the diet, that allows them to compensate and to increase their metabolic rate. And if you're someone who's been struggling with their metabolism, energy, brain fog, sleep, stress, or really any other health issue, then I strongly suggest you come check out Prism. Prism is our health coaching service. We do one-on-one -on -one consultations over video. We do continuous messaging extensive reports, lab analysis, lab ordering, supplement recommendations, diet coaching, anything that you could need in order to optimize any of your health goals, we do over at Prism. We've served over 500 clients and over 94% of our clients who stick with us for three months have improvements in at least one symptom. So you can book a free call here if you're interested in that and I hope to help you guys soon. Now, pretty recently, there's a protein that's been linked to sugar consumption and it seems to be responsible for a lot of these benefits and it is called FGF21. And this FGF21 works in several different tissues and it increases metabolism independently of the biochemical effects that we just talked about. FGF21 also has anti-inflammatory benefits and it can increase the thermogenesis or heat production within your fat tissue and it also increases your fat breakdown. In fact, FGF21 might even be a longevity compound. In different animal models, FGF21 was shown to improve longevity and several of the different signs of aging. And again, researchers are literally calling this a sugar-induced hormone. Sugar can also be beneficial by lowering your stress hormones. In fact, the entire counter-regulatory response to hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, is mediated by stress hormones, things like adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol. So it makes sense that these hormones would be lower when you're including more sugar in the diet. There was one study that took people and put them into a stressful situation and they consumed either sugar water or they consumed artificial sweetener. And they showed that people who drank the sugar actually had lower cortisol after the intervention, whereas people drinking the artificial sweetener had higher cortisol. One of the ways that sugar is able to do this is by lowering the amount of CRH or CRF. And this is a protein that's produced in your hypothalamus in your brain that starts the cascade of producing cortisol. I talked about this a bit in my last video, but these neurons are glucose sensitive neurons. They respond to your blood sugar levels. And we have experiments showing that supplying extra sugar in the diet can lower the amount of CRH in the hypothalamus. Another awesome benefit of sugar is that it's a more efficient substrate for glycogen. Glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates that your body uses in order to fuel you in between meals. And because of these unique metabolic properties of sugar and of fructose, it actually is able to raise the amount of glycogen that the liver stores, and it does so faster than just starch or glucose. There's even serious evidence that sugar can improve diabetes. Now, this is completely antithetical to all conventional wisdom, but it actually makes sense when you think about it. Diabetes at its core is an issue of metabolizing glucose. So if something like sugar or fructose can stimulate the metabolism of that glucose, then it makes perfect sense why it would be able to help in diabetes. In fact, a research review and meta-analysis showed that fructose was able to improve glycemic control in diabetics resulting in lower blood sugar, lower insulin levels, and reduced hemoglobin A1C. Now, one of the problems that they do see with this approach is that there can be a rise in lactic acid, which is basically a waste product of cellular metabolism that comes with its own set of side effects. But the reason for that is likely because there's not enough support in other areas of metabolism. Lactic acid will tend to build up when there are backups in the energy chain. And fructose or sugar only really stimulates the first part of metabolism. It doesn't really stimulate the latter part of metabolism that's in the mitochondria. Which brings me to my next point, is that sugar should be included in a otherwise pro-metabolic and very nutrient-rich diet. Some good sources of sugar are raw honey, milk, cane sugar, fruit and fruit juices, and even ice cream. Now, it is important that we keep in mind that with refined sugar sources, they do not contain any vitamins or minerals that would be contained in other foods. Therefore, it's important to be cognizant of your vitamin and mineral intake across the board. And it is also important to keep the diet relatively low in fat for a number of reasons that I've discussed in this video here. And remember, if you're adding sugar on top of your existing diet, then you should not really expect any of these benefits. You should expect there to be harm. But when sugar is included as a part of your diet, not added on top of it, then you will be reaping the metabolic benefits. Finally, if you're interested in getting any lab testing done, if you're in the United States, you can do so through Revelation Diagnostics. All you have to do is go to their website, search for whatever labs you want, add them to your cart, find a lab nearest you, get your blood drawn, and your results will be emailed back to you immediately. 
no doctor or prescription required. And you can use code ANALYZE for 10% off at checkout. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.